Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We bless his name this evening. We're here to continue with God so that the Lord will be our shield and butler. Amen. I'm so encouraged and so happy today, thank God, to be here to share with Brother Beza. And I just pray that the spirit of the Most High continue to guide us. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, brethren. Tonight, we want to greet our Heavenly Father, King Jesus, you know, for having us here one more time that we can share Amen. the undiluted gospel, you know, the only thing that can save us. And, you know, I'm here with Brother Mitchell tonight, and I'm just praying to God that our souls will be blessed tonight, Amen. and we will go higher in Christ. You know. Tonight, we have a, a nice topic put before us, and the topic of the lesson is, a man can only receive salvation only if he abide in Jesus. Praise we the praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And we heard the scripture reading earlier, but I'm going to ask Brother Mitchell to read it one more time. Praise the Lord. Brother Biza, um, I'm going to read the scripture reading again. And before I do, um, we're going to go through some definitions after we read the scripture reading of some of the words so we can get a clearer understanding of the words. And then we're going to have some biblical support. Amen. So that uh, we can, that will support our premise tonight, give us some more strength and support all right, in our idea and our theory in which we are going to put forth mm -hmm. to you this evening. Mm -hmm. And the scripture reading is Acts chapter 4 and verse 12. Neither is there salvation in any other. Amen. For there is none other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. Amen. We praise Hallelujah. the Lord. You know, tonight I'm looking at this scripture and the Lord has put it in my spirit for a reason. And, you know, when I look out there in this world today, Amen. you know, people turn to so much different gods, you know, idols. Some people turn to statues. In India, you'll find people worship elephants, oh. you know. In the Rasta world, you will find Selassie. You will hear about Buddha. And all these names, people looking to be saved. And here we are, not knowing that this name we're talking about, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. They don't know that all that they worship it is our God, yes. our King, who created who created all of that. Yes. And so in his commandment, you know, he, he, he told us he is a jealous God. Yes. We shall not bow before any statues, anything, because he's jealous. He created us. And when God created man, we were born to worship we were created to worship him yes. to serve him and we have to understand that we weren't created to work so hard and all these things we have to work yes to survive because of you know we know how society is today how the life is but man all duty is to worship God yes. we praise the Lord and so we have to refresh our minds tonight and get back where the, the Lord is taking us tonight. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name given under heaven among men 
whereby we can be saved. We praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, Brother Visa. And you're Amen. so right about people looking when, uh, for God when they worship. And he's called by so many other names. And you wonder, the, it's, it's so diverse. But I would like us to look uh, at the word salvation. Amen. Let's just delve into that word for a minute. Salvation. What is salvation? You know, Lord. salvation is like preservation. You know, Amen. salvation can, can come by no other name. No other. But through Jesus Christ. All right. Salvation is God with us. Okay. And it is, it is forgiveness. Okay. It is like cleansing us from our sins. Amen. From judgment. And not just judgment, but the righteous judgment, because God is telling us, and he told us before of the things that we had to do and the things that we should not be doing. Amen. All right? <laughs> so salvation is to be saved, to be delivered. Amen. And, 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 and so, Brother Beza, I, um, I'm so excited about the word salvation mm -hmm. because it is to be born again. You know, there's Amen. a Hebrew root word for, uh, that means salvation, where the salvation came from. And it's uh, Yasha, brother. Beza. And Yasha, if you really look into it, is the basis of the name Jesus. Amen. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. That, that is unbelievable. unbelievable. <laughs> and so it's God's sovereign choice to offer redemption yes. unto us. So if you were to read it again and you say, Neither is there redemption in any other. You'll yes. be correct. Amen. Right? Neither is there any protection from harm yes. than in any other. Oh, hallelujah. I, Brother Beza, I just love it. But Amen. I'm going to have you continue there. <laughs> <laughs> just love it, Brother Beza. I'm going to have you continue. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So this name we're talking about, we're talking about the name of Jesus. Amen. For there is none other name under heaven given among men. Right. Given among us, where, whereby we can be saved. Can so be we're saved. talking about the Savior, you know, yes. Jesus, we're talking about. And just to, to, to clarify, it, we want to turn our Bibles to John chapter 3, verse 16. Amen. John chapter 3, verse 16. Amen. And it's one that everybody's favorite. Hmm. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Wow. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Lord. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. For God so loved the world that yes. he gave his only, and this is the name we're talking about, yes. no other name under heaven, but the only begotten son. Amen. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish. Right. but have everlasting life. So that's the redemption we're talking about. That's the only way we can get that redemption. That's the only way we can be saved. Amen. Is if we believe and trust in the only begotten son. Amen. So when you look out there and you see, you know, all those gods with the lower Gs, people worship, they worship in vain. Yes. Lost in darkness, not knowing that those statues cannot do nothing. You know, Brother Mitchell, I was, I remember I was talking to my neighbor a few months ago. And 
she was telling me that her fiance saw a woman in the house and he's afraid. Hmm. So she asked me the question, you know, you know, the spirits come at you. You know, I, I, I tell her that. And she's asking me in the, in, the, in the meantime, if I'm afraid, I say, no, I'm not afraid. And I explained to her that, you know, I'm a believer and I trust God. The power that God has given unto me, I use the name of Jesus. You know what she said to me? She said, no, 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 no. You should not use that name. You only make them angry. And I was so happy to know that, you know, the name of Jesus, let demon tremble. Make you make them angry. And this is the name that we're talking about, the name of Jesus. That's Amen. the only name we can use in order to be saved. Amen. So you have to abide in his truth, abide in his love, abide in his mercy, Amen. You know, abide in his grace. And one of the most important things, abiding in Christ's instruction. Because that's that that's very important as believers. Amen. His instruction. Amen. You know, we might hear that word and think it's something simple, but believe me, instruction from the Lord is very important. Amen. Brother Mitchell. Yes, Brother Beza. St. John chapter 3, verse 16. And I know it's everybody's favorite. They love to read it and they use it for every battle. But it also a uh, scripture right now that reiterates what it is that we are saying. Amen. We're talking about salvation. We are talking about Jesus. We are talking about a man can receive salvation. Yes. We know that. But we also know it's only <laughs> if he abide in Jesus. Amen. See, all that is good. Only. You can have the, 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 the other gods, the figures, the names, the other names that you have. But we know a man can receive salvation. Hmm. But we know it's only, only. if he Amen. abide in Jesus. And that's why I love the topic. And, and, and I mean, it just makes sense because that Hebrew root word, yasha, that victory, it means victory also. You know, it is salvation, but that's victory. That's victory yes. for us, brother B. And I, and I and I just love that. You know, it is the basis yeah. of the name Yeshua. It is the basis of the name Jesus. Amen. Okay. And so John three sixteen. I'll never look at it the same again. <laughs> you can't use it loosely. It's yes. very powerful. Amen. It's very powerful, and it tells us, hey, listen, wake up. A man can receive salvation. Yes, he can, as we saw in Acts 4, 12. But he can only do it if he abide in Jesus. Amen. Amen, Brother Visa. And to clarify what you're saying, look at verse 17. Verse 17. It's in John chapter 3, verse 17. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. <laughs> Amen. Wow. Through Amen. him. Through him. Only through him. Only through him. And this is why we have to abide. This is why, you know, we have to trust and follow his instruction as he instructs us. Amen. We praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Well, we, we cannot question what we read. Yes. It's, it is the information that is there is for edification. You know, uh, it's, it's for our motivation. And when our mediator, Jesus, speaks to us, we know that when you listen, is when you have the benefit. We know yes. when you listen is when you have pr protection from harm. We know Amen. when you listen is when you have or protection from destruction, Amen. from loss. So I'm so excited, Brother Visa. Really, really yes. excited. Bless the Lord. 
is the Lord. Amen. We're going to turn our Bibles to St. John chapter 15 and verse 1. Oh, hallelujah. St. John chapter 15 and verse 1. Hmm. And it reads, I am the vine, I am the true vine, and my father is the husband man. The husband man. I am the wow. true vine, and my father is the husband man. Wow. Oh, hallelujah. You know, Brother Mitchell, you know, first we have to ask ourselves who is speaking? Who is speaking? Who is speaking? This is Jesus. Jesus. And he's saying that I am, I, I am. I am the true vine. Yes. My father is the husband man. It's the husband man. Yes. <laughs> you know, there's another version that says, because we want to get this. We want to get this tonight. If we don't pass this, you know, let's get this. There's another version that says, I am the true vine. Yes. My father is the gardener. Right. And we all know what is a gardener. Yes. So Jesus is saying that he is the vine. And that vine we're talking about, he's describing himself right now as a tree. Yes. Look at a tree. Remember, look at a tree. And when you plant that tree, you know, especially in your garden, it is summer now in America and stuff. And, you know, people, they plant a lot. Yes. And just imagine you have a garden and you plant that tree and you water it. So the gardener is watering it. That's God, the husband yeah. man. I am the true vine and my father is the husband man. Yeah. In other words, I'll ask Brother Mitchell to give us a definition on the husband man. Praise the Lord, Brother Beza. I will give a of definition of the husband, man. But as you said, Jesus is speaking. Amen. And he said, I am the true vine. So I am the real vine. I There's no other. Amen. There's no other. And, and, and the husband, man, that he's speaking about is his father. Amen. All right. And the, the husband man, if you think about it, the gardener, someone who is a gardener is someone who is like in charge. Amen. Right? He's in charge. Yes. And, and, and if he's in charge, you know, we know we call the person in charge the boss today. <laughs> but he's more than in charge or the boss. Yes. Like, you know, the husband man is the overseer. Amen. The one who takes care of the garden, the one who sees everything, knows everything that's going on. Amen. He knows how a tree best grow, the type of soil it grows best in, the mm -hmm. sunlight that would give it power to grow. You understand? So the husband man is not only just a farmer. It's not just a gardener. It's not a regular gardener. Yeah. It's like the overseer, mm -hmm. you know, and, 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 and as we all know, even today, a gardener is very important in our lives today. Mm -hmm. No gardening means no produce. No produce means no food. No food means no life. I mean, you're going to say, okay, if you don't plant, you're going to have canned food. Where is the canned food coming from? Right, Brother Visa? So the husband man is in charge. He's the boss. He's the overseer, the farmer. So that's the husband man, Amen. The, overseer, the one in charge. Thank you, Brother Mitchell. So we see Amen. that the husband man, the overseer, Amen. and his son Jesus is the vine. Yes. Watch how we go down into the scripture. Verse 2. St. John chapter 15 and verse 2, it reads, Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he take it away. Stop right there. Amen. Amen. So this is Jesus speaking. And he described himself in the first verse. I am the true vine. 
And this vine, this tree, he's saying every branch, so every branch in this tree that bear it not fruit, he take it away. I, I wonder what is the branch, Brother Mitchell? <laughs> the branch, the branch is us. Amen. The branch is us. You know, uh, you know, Brother Biza, mm -hmm. if you really look at the word husband, man, and you were to look at it closely, back in back in the day, a husband man was someone that has considered of a low status. You know, so here it is, we have an overseer that is willing to come to our level to motivate us, to teach us, you know, and I, and I know, and what I mean was, was, was the social status of a, of a husband man was, was, was low back in the time, back in the day. But if you look at the, if you break the word and you look at the word husband, a husband is someone who is master of his house. Amen. Overseer, in charge. So the branch is us. He's the vine. And Amen. all the resources comes from the husband man. Oh, hallelujah, Brother Beza. Praise the Lord. So excited. Amen. So Amen. Jesus is saying no. Every branch in me He's yes. talking about us. us, everyone in me. So if you call yourself a child of God, you have to be a fruit. Right. Continue down in the, in the scripture. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. Amen. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Amen. Amen. So Jesus is saying, every branch, every one, every believer in me right. that beareth not fruit, he, who is he? God, yes, the yes. overseer, the husbandman. God, take it away. Yes. He spit you out. He throw you out. You ever see, you know, grandma in her garden? And all the rotten leaves or the rotten fruits on the tree, she'll cut it off and throw it out. That's the job that God is doing. Jesus is telling you that right now, every branch in me that bear it, not fruit, he take it away. So if you call yourself a believer, we have to exercise the fruits of the spirit. You have to have love, the unity. Yes. You know, you have to have the spirit of God in order to grow fruit. Amen. And he's saying that, and every branch that beareth fruit, he, God, purgeth it. Yes. He purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. <laughs> Bless yes. the Lord. Praise the Lord. And you know, Brother Beza, when you read that scripture and you get to the word purge it, you know, Amen. you will see that purge is to cleanse. Yes. Or, or to purify, you know, by separating. Amen. You know, uh, or to get rid of. And, 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 and if in, in horticultural terms, if you were to purge or prune, uh, 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 pr purge a tree is like you're pruning it. When you prune something, a tree, a vine, whatever it is, you said, what are you doing? You're getting rid of the stuff that does not belong. Amen. The stuff that hinders growth. All right. So if, if we are to abide or if we are to, to be, to have salvation, we have to be in Jesus. And if we Amen. are in Jesus and we purge it, it means that we, at some point in time, have to be clear from guilt. Yes. Clear from moral defilement. Brother Beza. Amen. Purge away our sin or have our sins purged away. You know, um, we have to remove ourselves from, from what is offensive. 
you know, to our body, you know, to our surroundings, you know, you know, it's like getting away from impurities, you know, and it, it, you know, so if not, if we don't do this thing, as he says, you know, we will be get carried away Amen. or taken away or thrown away. We're going to get rid of, and that's not good. Amen. Amen, brother peace. So we have to, we have to bear fruit. We have to bear fruit. Christ. Amen. You know, you, you, we have to exercise the work of God. You know, when people see us, they have to see the Christ in us. Amen. And that's the only way the Lord will accept us. By Amen. us abiding. And, you know, as, as the scripture says, you know, and every branch that beareth fruit, he purged it. God yeah. purged it. It's talking about us. Everyone. Yeah. Everyone. You know, every, every believer that beareth fruit. So you're doing the work of God. Amen. You know, you're, you, you're operated by the spirit of God. And that's how the Lord purge you, keep on purging you and giving you the anointing. You know, the anointing that you become now a man of God, a woman of God. You are, you are sanctified. Yes. You know, because of the word of God, the word you have hid in your heart that you may not sin against him. Amen. Bless the Lord. Verse 3. St. John chapter 15 and verse 3. Now ye are clean through the word which Amen. I have spoken unto you. Amen. Well, Praise the Lord. You know, like I said, the word. Yes. Because of the word, you become sanctified. Right. You are purged, you are cleansed, you are purified. You know, and that's how the Lord use you. Yes. And as the scripture says before, I, I, just, I just said the scripture, you know, the word of God that you hid in your heart. You hold on to the word. You abide in the word. You know, and you start exercising the fruits of the spirit. Amen. And that's how the Lord, you know, cleanse you. He yes. said, no, you know, you are clean. No, you are clean to the words which I have spoken unto you. What is the word? The instruction. Instructions. Yeah. And it's very important. <laughs> Brother Mitchell. But it means, uh, you know, it says, now ye are clean. And, and I know that could be read, and ye, now you are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Amen. So now ye are clean is that now you are forgiven. Amen. You know, and through the word, the word of whose word? Of God. Amen. God's word, which I have spoken unto you. The direction that was already given to us. Yes. You know, so that way we can separate ourselves from the world, from others. You know, we can go move to higher ground, moral ground, that is. And we will purge ourselves from crime, guilt, you know, wrongdoing on, you know, any wrongdoing, you know, and as a matter of fact, if you, you do it, practice that over and over and over, you're going to find that it becomes easy and easier to accomplish, Amen. to be purged, to be cleansed and stay clean. Amen. Amen. Bless Praise the Lord. Lord. Verse four. Verse 4, St. John chapter 15 and verse 4. Abide in me and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. Wow. No more can ye except ye abide in me. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So he's now beseeching us. He's, yes. 
he's begging us, telling us, abide. This is Jesus. Yes. Saying, abide in me. Abide in me. And I in you. Amen. As the branch. And when you see branch, it is talking about us. So as you cannot be a fruit of itself, except you abide. So just look at a tree. And if you should go outside and you should cut a branch off that tree, can it be a fruit? It can't. No. So if we abide in, 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 in Christ, that's the only way we can be saved. If we abide. Only if we abide, we can. Look at this, this look at this, this verse, Brother Mitchell. St. John chapter 14, verse 26. St. John chapter 14 and verse 26. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. Amen. So when you Amen. abide, in verse 4 it said, abide in me and I in you. And I in you. The Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost that dwelleth in you, that Christ sent. That's what going to teach us. It says that, but the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, yes. whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things. So when you abide in Christ, we have the Comforter. Yes. Who will lead us, who will teach us. So we must abide. Brother Mitchell. Amen, Brother Biza. You know, Brother Biza, I would like to look at St. John chapter 15 and verse 4 again. Amen. And I love the scripture you just quoted, uh, St. John's 14, 26. Because I want to look at the word abide. Amen. You know, you know it says abide in me. And that me is Jesus, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. Amen. You know, no more can ye except ye abide in me. So ye is you. So, Amen. but what is what it is to abide? You know. Amen. If, if you look at the word abide, it means to endure, to sojourn with me, you know. Amen. So sojourn in, in, in me, endure in me, continue in me. Amen. Remain in me. Amen. Lodge yourself in me. Get, get involved with me. Yes. You know, I in you, and you, you know, in me. You know. Amen. And, 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 and if we were to do that, abide and lodge and lock on. Oh, hallelujah. What, what's gonna happen? You're gonna find that it is exactly what our topic is. A man can receive salvation. But only if, if he, he abides abide in Jesus. Amen. There's no other way. There's no other way. There's no other way, you know, to lock on. We have to uh, await. Amen. You know, await. And there's a there's a Hebrew root word for abide. And and and, and it is um yasha. You know, and 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 that's the, the that root word, the Hebrew word um is to continue endure, to surround. So we have to, in our lives has to surround ourselves to just receive the promise of yes. Jesus. Amen. That benefit that we're going to get through Jesus. You know, and, 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 and so as a branch that cannot, you know, be a fruit of itself. And it cannot, if you look at it, you go outside and physically look at a tree, you know that branch is not growing fruit without the roots, without the vine, without Amen. the trunk, 
without the nurture from the husband man. It's not. It cannot bear without any nourishment. It cannot. It cannot grow fruit by of by itself, except it abide in the vine, except it's Amen. connected. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Thank you, Brother Mitchell. <laughs> abide. You know, I love the word that abide, connected, connected, remain. So, you know, Brother Mitchell is saying that you have to, we have to remain with Christ. Amen. When the scripture is telling us to abide. There's a, there's a verse that says in Psalms 91 verse 1. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. You know, that's a, that's a very powerful, powerful verse right there. He that dwelleth, abideth. So just ch change, change that dwelleth to abide. He that abideth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Under the shadow of the Almighty. You know, that's where you're untouchable. Right. You know, you know last week we were looking at, a, at, at, a, at a, a verse in Job that Satan said. When God questioned him, you know, where are you going? When he was following Job yes. to church. And... You know, when God asked him, have you considered my servant Job? If you notice his, his reply, but before you notice his reply, God said to, to, to Job, to, to Satan, an upright man that eschewed evil. So you're talking about a man that abide now in the secret place of the Most High. Yes. And Satan respond was, how can I consider him when you place an edge around him? That's the abide. That's the secret place. When you abide, the, not even the enemy can consider you when you abide. So, you know, let us look at Job, a man who abide in the word of God. He abides so much that the enemy didn't even consider him because he's protected. He was covered. Yes. And that's the height that we want to gain tonight. Abiding in Christ. In verse four, he said, abide in me and I in you as the branch. So he's talking about you, us right here. As the branch cannot bear fruit. You cannot bear no. fruit of yourself except no. you abide with him. Yes. You don't know your way, but he know. He yes. know what is out there, what you're going to step in. And he's the only one that can clear your path. So we must abide. Abide with him. He said, and I with you, the Holy Spirit in you. That's what he's talking about. He's in you. And so this is when you became, you're filled. You're untouchable. You know, something happened to you and you even forgive before the person even says sorry. Like what Brother Danny was saying last night. That's what happened when the Spirit of God is in you. Yes. When you, when you dwell it. So it is a very important, you know, it's very important when we abide with Christ. Yes. And be obedient to his instruction. Yes, Brother Beasley. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Brother Bisa, I love the point you made with Job. Amen. And he said, because Job did abide, um, you know, the devil, Satan didn't even, didn't even look at Job because, you know, Job was protected. Amen. You know, but, you know, lo the Lord wanted to use Job as an example unto us. And Amen. so, you know, he asked, that's why he asked the question, have you considered my servant, you know, Job? He said, but you, you know, you, you, you protect him. You got a hedge around him. And he said, okay, I'll remove the hedge. Just you know, do whatever you want. Just don't take his life. Amen. You know? And he still continued to abide. You know, and, and it's funny that you read Psalms 91 because I had that 
um, there to make one of my point in the Bible. But, you know, and, 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 but we have to be consistent. You know, because the psalmist David said in Psalm 121 that I will lift my eyes where? Unto the hill from whence cometh my help. And where does the help come from? The Lord. Lord. So if we are not abiding, we're not going to be looking. And if we are not abiding, we wouldn't, we wouldn't know where to look. Amen. So abiding is very important because uh, it gives us a chance to dwell. It gives us an opportunity to, to await, to yes. continue with Christ, you know, to lodge on, remain in the Amen. spirit so we can uh, just have that Holy Spirit attach itself into our body, into our minds, into our being so that we can fulfill the promise. It's so important that a man can get salvation, but only if he abide in Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. Brother Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord. Verse 6. Verse 6. Amen. St. John chapter 15 and verse 6. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is with him. And men gather them and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. Wow. Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> no is, good. This is serious. If a man abide not. Yes. yes. Wow. So, you know, if we don't abide in Christ, look at what the scripture is saying to us. If a man abide not in me, this is Jesus speaking. He is cast forth as a branch and is withered, start drying up. And men gather them and, yeah, and cast them into the fire and they are burned. That's what, that's who we are without Christ when we don't abide. No good. Bless the Lord, Brother Mitchell. Brother Biza, you know, after a storm, we usually see branches from trees down. Things are torn apart, ripped. It's yeah. separated. And when it's separated, what happens to the branch that's separated from the tree, unless it's extremely bad, they usually don't cut down the tree. They'll cut up the branches. Yes. And they cut the branches and it's been put in a pile. And you picture this. Now, those stuff will stay there. It'll dry. And anybody can use it. So now, if we are not abiding in Jesus, we're going to be like a branch that is what? Cut down. Yes. That is withered. And anybody could have their way with us now. Anybody. Because now we're not protected. Amen. Not large or locked in anymore unto Jesus. You know, we are Amen. breaking away or have broken away. You know, so what Christ is saying to you and I is that I am the vine. I am the true vine. Amen. I'm the real deal. And if you're not abiding in me, you, you, you're going to be taken to ruin. Mm -hmm. You'll perish. Amen. You're going to perish. You know, and, and there's no other way. There's no chance for you if you're in ruins. If yes. you're just left under, uh, uh, you know, you're no longer connected to the root. You no longer have the care of the husbandman. Amen. Okay. You're not under the umbrella anymore. And, and, we, and we know that if you're staying under the umbrella of Christ, that that's when you, virtue will come. That's when yes. protection will come. That's when we can have the strength to endure. That's when we yes. have the opportunity and the ability to have the Holy Ghost and the Spirit, you know, infused into our mind, into our souls, into our body. So, you know, and if we are not abiding in, in Jesus or, or have Je or, uh, Jesus abide in us, we lose that opportunity. 
Amen. We 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 are cast away, and look at look at and look at what's going to happen to us. We're going to be burned. Yes. We're going to be burned, brother. Bezer. He says, <laughs> and men gather them and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. Amen. Even you now, we now become a non-factor if we lose sight and not holding on to the most high. We're not Amen. holding on to Jesus, you know, <laughs> and, 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 and we will be perished. We'll, we will get destroyed. Amen. And, and then ultimately we're going to lose salvation. Praise, Praise the Lord. Lord. <laughs> You know, and this is why we have to guard our hearts with all diligence, you know, guard it. Because we know that all things work together for good to them that love God. And what we're talking about, that love for Christ, you know, you don't want to sin against him. And if it happened that, you know, you do something, you have to find him and repent. That's the abiding he want to know when you, 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 you messed up and come back to him and apologize. Lord, I, Lord I'm asking you to forgive me. Amen. You know, so that's, that's the level we want to be in Christ, abiding in all he said, in all the things he said that, you know, we, sh we should do. We abide in it. Verse, verse 7. Uh, Brother Beza, before we go on to verse 7, um, just want to piggyback on what you just said there. I, I just wanted to re reiterate it again, because, I mean, I, I think, you know, verse 6 is, is, is powerful. I mean, all of them are powerful, but verse 6 is very powerful because, you know, just for the fact that it, it's so easy to lose salvation. It says, if a man abide not in me. Yes. You know, and so it's so it's in other words, if a man refuses to lodge with me, Amen. If if a man no longer wants to continue with me, you know, if a man no longer wants to endure with me, he's cast off as a branch, Amen, you know, and withered away. And 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 with that, which means he no, he no longer can absorb water. That, that that life water hmm. can no longer get it. Oh hallelujah! And, and I and I just pray that you know that is not any of us listening. Chapter fifteen, Amen. Saint John, chapter fifteen and verse seven. It reads, "If ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will." And it shall be done unto you. Amen. Read that one more time. That's the promise. <laughs> if ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. Hmm. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So when you abide, it comes with blessing. Yes. It comes with favor. Yes. You know, and God, you know, he's a man of his word. Whatever he says, he will do. do. That's one thing that we have to understand. Whatever he says, he will do. When we abide, the verse says, if he abide in me and my words abide in you. And when the words abide, in us, you know, as, as the verse, the scripture says, thy words have I hid in my heart. You don't sin against God. And if it happened that you fall short of his glory, you know, you make it right. Because we don't want to lose that salvation. Mm -hmm. as, 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 as we're showing, you don't want to lose that salvation that Christ promised. So it is good for us where we are fall short, we catch up, we get up. A higher place, the song says, I'm pressing on the upward way. That should be our prayer each day. We want to go higher in Christ. 
abiding in his love. You know, and so as the verse read, if he abide in me and my words abide in you, he shall ask what he will, and it shall be done unto you. This is this is this is confirmation. This is clarity. This is, you know, this is strength. This is, you know, the God of heaven, the God who deliver his people out of bondage with a mighty hand. You know, we're talking about that God giving us his word. The word became flesh and walk just like us on this earth. Jesus, you know, and he came and he gave us his instruction how to live. And before, you know, I have a, I have a, a nice couple of verses to read before we go to show us the way that, G, that Christ wants. We should be like Christ, Christ-like. You know, exercising his love. Do unto others as, you know, you, you like them to do unto you. You know, esteeming others even better than yourself. That's, that's a serious one. And that's his instructions. And that's the type of man that God wants. The type of woman he wants with him. Because we have to understand that we are a vessel. He's a spirit and he wants to use us. He has to dwell in us to manifest his words. So we have to, you know, make ourselves available where yes. he can use us. That spirit dwells in us. I want you to understand what I'm saying. Yes. Making yourself pure, purge, purify, cleanse, you know, where the spirit dwells and he can manifest himself through us. So that's where Christ wants us when we abide in him, where he can use us to show his glory. There's a, there's a verse that says, let your light so shine before men. That's serious. Amen. And so, you know, we have to come to the mindset today, knowing that, you know, as believers, the road that Christ wants us to take, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a big step. But, you know, in order to receive salvation, we have to abide. There is so much instruction that the Lord has given unto us. And in everything you do, there's an instruction, a way how to do it with Christ. There's always a way, the right way. And, you know, I always say that in the book of Matthew, it's a very powerful, powerful chapter to know how Christ, how we do stuff, how he teaches us to forgive. And, you know, we're on forgiveness for like, what, three, three weeks now? Or, you know, for some time or four weeks. And that's what Christ wants. He wants us with a heart of forgiveness. Yes. And Brother Danny said last night, he said, and I write it down, forgiveness from a faith standpoint. That's deep. You know, you don't forgive because the person asks or the person say, I'm sorry. You forgive from a faith standpoint because you know the Christ that lives in you. And when Christ lives in you, he forgives. So that's the level that Christ wants us to be on when we abide. That's where you'd be. Bless the Lord. Brother Mitchell. Brother Beza, we praise the Lord. You know, if Jesus, if we don't abide in Jesus, we no longer have access to salvation. Amen which means we no longer have access to everlasting life. Yes. You know, Paul said something. You know, as Paul says, only through Jesus can a man receive salvation. And uh, I think that is in uh, 2 Corinthians 4, 14. Um, maybe I'll just read it quickly. 2 Corinthians 4, verse 14. Knowing that he which raised up the Lord Jesus 
shall raise up us also by Jesus Amen. and shall present us with you. Okay? Amen. So, it's clear. Now is the time for salvation. Now is the time to lock on, to remain, to continue in the Lord, in Jesus Amen. Christ, to abide. Why? Because it is the only way to receive the promise. You know, it belongs to us. Christ belongs to us. We have to Amen. acknowledge that. You know, and if we do, as Paul says, that um, we will have an opportunity to be raised up to accomplish that spiritual height. Yes. So that we can have not only seek salvation, but have it, have take possession of it through Jesus Christ. You know, and 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 so I'm grateful that you had me on with you tonight to speak about this topic. It is such Amen. a wonderful topic. I know it's not the end yet, but I think that as you just said, and I have to read away, that we have come at least for now at the end. No longer have access if we, and no longer have access to everlasting life unless we abide in Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Peter. It was and, a um, Let me tell. <laughs> yes. I have a you know a couple of verses I would like to leave with the brethren, you know. Yes. Bless the Lord. I'm taking from Philippians chapter two, and we'll read from verse three. Amen. Verse three says, "Let nothing be done through strife or or vain glory, but in lowliness of mind, let each." esteem others better than themselves. No, that's the man or the woman of God, you know, Christ is looking for. Yes. Someone who does that. Look at verse four. Yes. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Yes. We must be a servant. These are some powerful instructions. Look at verse five. Let this mind be in you, which was which was also in Christ Jesus. You yes. see that? Yes. Verse six, who being in the form of God, through it, not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation. Wow. And, to and took upon him from a servant, form of, a servant. of a servant, sorry, and was made in the likeness of men. You see how low Christ came down? Yeah. Of no reputation. Right, husband, man. Of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. We're going to stop at verse 12. Verse 8, and being found in fashion as a man he humbled himself and become obedient unto death even the death of the cross verse 9 wherefore god also had highly exalted him and give him a name which is above every name that at the name of jesus every knees wow should bow of things in heaven and things in and earth and things, and things under the earth. Yes. Verse 11, and that every tongue should Sorry. confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God, the Father. Verse 12, and appointed, wherefore, my beloved, as he as you have already obeyed, not as in my presence only. So not just in 
his presence. Right. But no, much more in my absence. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Amen. That is the word of God I want to give to us tonight. Work out our own salvation with fear and trembling. Abide in Christ. Thank Amen. you for listening. Amen. Bless the Lord. Praise the Lord.